Hi, my name is Charlie Pickett. I work for the California Department of Food and Agriculture, and uh, my job responsibilities over the last almost 25 years have uh, uh, pretty much focused on uh, biological control or classical biological control. So I have a PhD in entomology, a master's in botany, and a bachelor's degree in biology. And my, my interest in how I landed where I am today began uh, while, while I was growing up in uh, Los Angeles during the 60s and 70s, there was a tremendous interest in the impact of our society on the environment. And that was because, uh, well, the air in Southern California was extremely polluted and to the point where it, was, uh, it made it difficult to breathe uh, during the months of uh, August and September. And uh, water quality was also pretty bad as well, and, and just lots of uh, pollution. Uh, it seems like wherever you looked. In terms of uh, the role of IPM in orchards, I, I've had a lot of experience working with a, a range of growers. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, when I first started working in, in agriculture as a professional, and, and during my PhD work, that's actually where I really started having firsthand interaction with, uh, with growers because uh, my study sites were in growers' fields and commercial fields. Uh, at that time, uh, it was uh, growers really didn't, weren't really buying into uh, the role of natural enemies uh, and biological control in their fields. They're really pretty much um, uh, diehards in, uh, in in terms of the use of insecticides, and it showed, you know, <clears throat> based on the amount of uh, the number of pounds of insecticides that were applied to fields. And over that period of time, I think <clears throat> one of the greatest changes I've seen is that the uh, grower uh, community uh, has really become uh, far, uh, is far more enlightened today and in terms of uh, what uh, natural enemies can do for them in their field, you know, save them money, basically. And um, so I... It, so in terms of IPM, I think probably one of its greatest strengths, uh, greatest contributions has been to actually move the grower community and agriculture community into a world in which uh, they, they recognize that uh, biological control is a play, can play a major role in, in preventing serious uh, pest problems. And uh, that is reflected in today's, uh, in the types of pesticides that are used today versus those that were used back in the 70s and 80s, far more selective. And uh, that has allowed for um, the uh, predators and parasitoids to express themselves more. And this is really, I'm sure, because uh, our growers, uh, because they became enlightened and, and knew what the role of natural enemies were, they demanded that uh, uh, more selective pesticides uh, be developed. So uh, from that standpoint, you know, um, <clears throat> and any, any orchard system has, all orchard systems probably have benefited from this. And, and California has always played a, a leading role in terms of uh, integrating uh, uh, natural enemies into orchard systems, starting with the citrus industry in the 1880s in Southern California. And the citrus industry today continues to benefit from the uh, from the presence of uh, a couple of, uh, uh, pr uh, well, a predator and a parasitoid uh, because they do, they continue to control the cottony cushion scale, which was uh, a devastating pest and actually would have eliminated the citrus industry from, the, from California if it wasn't, wasn't for the introduction of uh, these uh, natural enemies. And, um, and, and, the, and the industry today remembers that, that uh, that, uh, that particular project and, and the impact of those natural enemies. You know, one of the, the major strategies and points that uh, IPM is, is based on is that uh, pesticides are applied on an on as-needed basis. And I, I don't really think that is, from my experience, is really what, what uh, takes place. Uh, maybe in some, some systems, but uh, I think it's the minority. I think uh, even to this day, most growers who 
who, re, who use conventional pesticides uh, are more, far more likely to uh, base their application on a calendar basis uh, because, uh, quite frankly, you know, it's, it's, it's cheap insurance. You can sleep easily at night if you know your field's being treated with a, a highly effective uh, insecticide. You know, my interest in, in classical biologic cont control has led to a lot of interaction with uh, organic growers because, quite frankly, it's far easier to get uh, new uh, predators or parasitoids established in, a, in an area if you're working with grow a grower that, that doesn't use uh, highly toxic uh, pesticides. And, and based on that interaction, it's, it's quite obvious that for a number of reasons, uh, you know, uh, people that were con considered conventional growers have now transitioned into organic farming. It could be just a business decision, philosophical concern about their family, the environment. Uh, whatever, but it's it uh, crops can be grown without uh, highly toxic uh, chemicals, and uh, you know I've I've seen that firsthand because of uh, working with growers that um, that uh, have made this decision uh, to basically uh, completely eliminate the use of uh, synthetic uh, pesticides um, uh, from their uh, farming systems. So in conclusion, I think IPM has played an absolutely critical role in uh, improving uh, pest management systems in orchard, in orchard systems in California and probably throughout the country. Uh, however, I think it's more of a stepping stone and in order to really move people away from the use of a dependency, you might say, uh, on synthetic uh, pesticides. Uh, it would be important to take a much far closer look at what people are doing in uh, organic farming systems. And quite frankly, there's, uh, there's a whole gap there where there's a tremendous need for more um, research in that area that, to help people who are making that transition and uh, jump to, uh, into organic farming systems and help them to be able to um, produce a, a healthy, clean crop economically.